And it's time for Big East basketball. Hello once again, everybody. I am Bill Hillgrove along with Big East Commissioner Dave Gavitt, and we're set for a big one tonight. It's a big one for the Pitt Panthers because they're coming off that disappointing loss to St. John's. The Panthers now 2-2 two two in Big East play against uh, Jim O'Brien's club, the Boston College Eagles. Uh, kind of a complete change around from Gary Williams, who's departed for Ohio State. They're playing deliberate basketball. They've hung in with everybody, but they're 1-4 in Big East play. For the Panthers, certainly a must game tonight because Pitt has to prove that they can win in this league on the road. I think winning on the road every time you do, it's one plus for the, for the gun in your holster. And this game is a very important game for Pitt, sandwiched in between St. John's and the next one, which is on the road again at the Carrier Dome. Okay, the key players in tonight's game, certainly for the Panthers, a key player who's been absent, uh, absent, and I think that's kind of hurt the Panthers and Coach Paul Evans, and that's Demetrius Gore, the junior from Detroit. He played 19 minutes against St. John's the other night, and when Gore doesn't score and get that baseline opened up, things are tough for Charles Smith. Well, I think it puts more pressure on everyone else, and then you sort of strain and get out of the game plan a little bit. Demetrius Gore is too good a player to stay down, I believe, but I think players go through these kind of slumps in the season, Bill, and when they do, they've got to learn to really go at it hard in some of the other areas other than scoring. Rebounding, defense, pick it up on the offensive board. Charles Smith did not shoot the ball well against St. John's. He was 4 for 14 the other night. It looked like he was hesitating a lot in his shots. For Boston College, obviously, well, their key player is no secret. Biggie's rest for the year last year, Dana Barrows. He's wearing a new number, number three. Dana Barrows has to play well for BC to play well, and thus far this year he has. Not only is he coming off a great performance against Seton Hall, 29, the other night, but he's really put some numbers on the board against the likes of Georgia Tech, uh, Villanova, Syracuse, and St. John's. Four teams at BC led in the second half, and we're not able to hang on. A big plus, Troy Bowers. He's one of the captains for the Eagles, and uh, he's a 6'8 performer. They've sorely missed him. He's had some leg problems. He's back healthy. Played 27 minutes the other night in the big win over Seton Hall. So it's a big one tonight at venerable old Boston Garden. Bill Hillgrove and Dave Gavitt on the parquet floor. We'll be back with Pitt and BC right after these messages. It's the basketball happening of the year on March 5th through 8th when the Big East Championships come to Madison Square Garden in New York City. The magic and magnificence of Big East basketball are on display for four days and eight games as the Big East champion is crowned. Tournament tickets are available right here in Pittsburgh. Just call the Pitt ticket office and order them by phone with Visa or MasterCard. There's only a limited supply of tournament tickets available. That's the Big East Championships March 5th through 8th at Madison Square Garden. By tomorrow morning, 7 to 9. Inch. What's it going to be? Snow or no snow? School or no snow? Uh, gentlemen, seven to nine inches by morning. School. Hello. Oh, Dad. Ready for the pitcher? Yep. Got the pitch fork? Nope. Got a shovel. How come? Going to snow. Says who? Oh, Joe said it was. Joe and my said it was going to be cold today. So I think we should put on the ammo. Joe said it was. Welcome to the game show that's more fun than... Playing tennis in bed. <laughs> more exciting than... A Ferrari in my driveway, honey. And more good, clean fun than ever. Delta, do all mammals have tongues? Well, yes, all the ones I've known, yes. <laughs> Delta! Well... Go ahead, whoop it up with your favorite stars. We'll even double your fun with twin contestants on the Hollywood Squares. The stars come out on Hollywood Squares Monday night at 7.30. The new tax law will change the amount of taxes most people owe next year. So the amount of income tax withheld from your paycheck now may not be correct for 1987. That's why the new law requires every employee to file a new Form W-4 with their employer. You have until October 1st, 1987 to do it. But if you wait until then to file, you could be under withheld and owe tax when you file your 1987 return. So file now. Form W-4 is available from your employer. The Panthers uh, are out to prove something, and that's the fact that uh, they've suffered a, a lapse after winning the Rainbow Classic and looking good in Hawaii. They came back and stumped their toe against uh, the Georgetown Hoyas and also against St. John's on Monday night. Pitt against Boston College. Right now, let's go to Ted Sarandis, the PA announcer for the starting lineups. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. 
Welcome to historic Boston Garden, home of the Boston Bruins and the world champion Boston Celtics. Tonight, it's the best in college basketball, the Big East Conference. The Boston College Eagles host the University of Pittsburgh Panthers. Let's meet the starting lineups. First, for the visiting University of Pittsburgh Panthers. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Akron, Ohio, number 34, Jerome Lane. For Boston College, at forward, a 6'5 senior from Andover, Massachusetts, number 10, Ted Kelly. For Pittsburgh, at forward, a 6'5 junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 33, Demetrius Gore. For Boston College, a 6'7 junior at forward, from Nashua, New Hampshire, number 33, Skip Barry. Center, a 6'10 junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut, number 32, Charles Smith. For Boston College, at center, a 6'8 junior from Geneva, New York, number 44, Tyrone Scott. For Pittsburgh, at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Elizabeth, New Jersey, number 11, Mike Goodson. Boston College at guard, a six-foot junior from Providence, Rhode Island, number 11, Jamie Benton. For Pittsburgh at guard, a six-foot senior from Buffalo, New York, number 14, Curtis Aiken. For Boston College at guard, a 5 pivot sophomore from Manapan, Massachusetts, number three, Dana Barrows. of Pittsburgh is Mr. Paul Evans. The head coach of Boston College is Mr. Jim O'Brien. The Panthers are a six-point favorite over Boston College. Head against BC in the Big East Wars. We'll have the tap right after this. Wiley Coyote's using the Donnelly directory again. It's a complete, colorful yellow pages that's better and easier to use. Oh, no. Ah, the Donnelly directory with street maps, white pages, and entertainment guides. It's a better yellow pages. Saved again. The Donnelly directory. It's the yellow pages and much, much more. In 1986, for the fourth straight year, Volkswagen was the best-selling European car line in America. To get this year off to a great start, Volkswagen's having a kickoff 87 celebration. Right now, you can lease the Golf, the best-selling car in Europe, for only $148 a month. See your local Volkswagen dealer and get a Golf from stock or order through February 15th. Or great deals on any of the 1987 Volkswagens. But hurry, the cars and deals are going fast. Team shooting very well from the floor. You can see the stats, and uh, BC working very hard, only to lose several key games coming down the stretch. Hit with the big edge in the rebound margin, and that's Boston College's concern in this ball game. BC ends up with a basketball after it's touched by several players on both sides, and there's number three, Dana Barrows. 33 in the left-hand corner is Skip Gary, and that's Jamie Benton, number 11. That was set up in an early. Looks like a boxing one. No, they, they're leaving uh, Barrows alone right now. One, two, two zone, but they'll be trying to point on Barrows, Bill. Good three-point shooter. Now Kelly, number 10, handles Barrows. Benton wanted to go inside. Shot clock is at 12. You see, winding time. They're very patient, unlike previous years. Different style of basketball. Four seconds on the shot clock, and the Panthers have the rebound on the miss by Barry. Hit in their transition game. With number 14, Curtis Aiken. Gore handles, and then Goodson runs the club. Aiken has not been shooting well lately. The Panthers in the Big East have not been shooting well. Gore missing. The tap doesn't go, and BC finally comes out of there with a rebound. Good job by Scott, and of course he had help that time from Jamie Benton, who covered the ball. You'll see the BC guards trying to get back into the rebound action because the pit front line is really big for them to handle. Now Benton attacks from the right side as they kind of change up the second trip down. No score. BC's second possession. Benton 
out of the paint again. Barros lets it fly. Dana Barros with that rainbow. And BC's on top, two to nothing. BC extending their zone a little bit for trap pressure, but they'll do that to try to take time off the clock. BC would like to see this game play in the 50s. Hit probably 20 points higher than that. Panthers almost losing there, but Gore gets to the ball. Now Goodson gets it on the blocks to Smith. Back outside it comes. Aiken trying to make something happen, and he does, and the game is tied at two. From a team standpoint, Charles Smith should get an assist on that because he was the guy that punched it out of the pivot, and the BC defense never really quite caught up with it. Little gift from the Palestra down in the corner, the inevitable streamers. Those are legitimate streamers. We've yeah. seen some others uh, in earlier games this year that are simply rolls of tissue. All right, full three-quarter court zone pressure by Pitt now. Again, just sort of soft. Huh? Curtis Aiken defensively pointing that one, two, two. First time on the baseline to Scott. And it comes right back out to Benton. Jamie Benton makes it forward to Boston College. Bill BC gets a lot of scoring out of their two guards, but not too much out of their inside people. Smith has to work hard to get the ball, and he draws the foul inside, and I believe it'll be on Tyrone Scott. Now here's the play again. Charles Smith posting up. He draws a crowd wherever he is. The first time he punched it out and set up Aiken on the other side. This time makes a nice, good, strong turn. You see Scott with a contact. 17-28 left first half. Charles Smith made 18 of 21 as a freshman against Boston College. That's a Big East record that stands today. I remember that game. It was at Roberts Center. Pitt was really in trouble in the game. You could see the look in Charles Smith's eyes. And he almost took the game over, which not many freshmen are capable of doing. The game is tied at four, and the Panthers again with that pressure. I guess, obviously, Paul Evans would like their guards, the BC guards, to work very hard in the early going. Exactly. He'd like to try to wear them down. Neither team has a real deep bench, but it's a little bigger. Barrows. And when he's on it, that's a home run. BC can catch fire. It's 7-4. Panthers in their transition game. Aiken missing. Lane crashing and drawing the foul as well. The nation's leading rebounder, Jerome Lane. Well, there are two ways to make three-pointers. You just saw Dana Barrows do it from outside at the other end. And down this end, Jerome Lane, who I think may be one of the most improved players that I've seen in the conference or in the country this year, because of this reason, he has really become a force on the boards. After the St. John's game Tuesday, the Panthers looked at the film. Paul Evans said to Jerome, you can take the day off. The rest of us have to work. No, he's, he's just been immense on the glass all year long. Game is tied. Three-pointers at both ends at 7-7. Hit in their three-quarter pressure would like to use it to make BC speed up to make fatigue a factor. But they've got to quickly find barrels when they get through it. And Benton. Right wing at Skip Barry. Now they collapse it to the left. But Moore gets there to check barrels. Louis Karnaseka said of Barros, you need a howitzer at point-blank range to stop it. He had 29 against St. John's. <laughs> Scared the daylights out of the Red Who, By the way, he played a great game at Syracuse today to lose by one. Good comeback. Barros from three-point range again, and it's 10-7. Dana Barros, now the early going, has... Eight of the ten points. Eight of the ten. Smith back out to Goodson. Goodson's been shooting well of late, and it's 10-9. Charles Smith showing you how important it is to have a pivot man that can pass the ball. I've been very impressed with the way he's been punching the ball out of the post all year. But Boston College been averaging a little over 5,000 here at the 15,000-seat Boston Garden, where 14 world championship banners hang in that Boston Celtic green and white. The redhead is here tonight, but Arbach is here. Well, I don't think it's any mistake either. He came up from Washington on the plane this morning, and I think clearly he came to wanting to take a look at Charles Smith and, and uh, Jerome Lane. Lane, only a sophomore. One of the good things about Red with underclassmen, he'll make up his mind quick. What uh, patience by BC. But he will be the first guy to always preach to the young men to stay in school. Scott with a layup, making it 12-9 Boston College by three. 
15-10 left of the first half. Lane loose on the baseline. Jerome Lane. 12-11. Panthers trail by one. A little soft pressure here. And Boston College throwing over it, and the ball ends up in the hands of Dana Barrows, the sophomore from right here in Massachusetts. A little trouble, a little extra step by Jamie Benton, and that uh, will be Boston College with their first turnover of the basketball game, and we'll have a stoppage of play at 14-48. Boston College has the lead, but the Panthers have the basketball when we come back. Piedmont Airlines, when we serve you a beverage and coach, we do something no other major airline does. We leave you the whole can, something we've been doing for years. It's a minor detail to be sure, but minor details like go. this explain why frequent flyers have ranked our service among the best of any major airline. So fly Piedmont. Oh, miss, you forgot this. You'll find our attitude oh, no. most refreshing. Piedmont, a model of how good an airline can be. Everyone gets one. We made it. Our first real deal. Now if we can just make our flight. Oh, you're hot, you're hot. Agent, agent, we got red hot cars. How good a deal did we get on that car? When you're hot, you're hot. Avis, Avis, red hot. This copyright of telecast is produced by the authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. A little chilly here in Boston Garden. They played a hockey game here this afternoon, and uh, the floor is down directly over the ice, and it's kind of cool in here, David. Busy weekend for this venerable old building. Celtics were here last night. Bruins beat Calgary this afternoon. BC pit tonight, and the Celts back with the Sixers tomorrow afternoon. Celts did a number on the Hawks. Smith, three people around him. Lane doesn't get it, but he gets the foul from behind. BC switched up their coverage a little bit that time, went to the 1-3-1 pit, recognized it immediately. You see the two guys on the block, Smith on this side, Lane on the other. Real good look by Charles Smith, and there's Barrows, not able to get down and cut that angle in time. For Barrows, his first foul. And BC does a good job defensively, but the long arms of Charles Smith, and he can't get it to go, and it comes right out to Demetrius Gore. The Panthers recycle the shot clock. Jim O'Brien begging trail official Mickey Crowley about something. Curtis Aiken from deep in the corner, and if Aiken can get hot, the Panthers can get out in front, which they've done now, and hold the lead. Well, if Curtis and Mike Goodson hit a couple of jumpers outside, that makes that BC defense have to extend a little bit, and then they can work the inside game with the three big guys. All right, here's a 1-3 zone and a chaser on Barros. First time we've seen a special defense. It's not the first time Barros has seen special defense, and I think he's going to see a lot more of them. He is a dominant player, and Goodson is on him. Like flag paper and another travel call. This time Barry took the skip step and Peter Pavia whistled it down. Peter Pavia working this game with fellow officials Mickey Crowley and John Letcher, all three from the state of New York. Demetrius Gore, but Smith kicks it out to Aiken. Barry gets there, so the Panthers restart their offensive efforts. Lane center posting. Aiken has to chase that loose pass. Panthers working to get the ball in the right spots. Gore missing. Rebound Barry, and he's fouled by Smith. Team fouls for the Panthers. That is the first. Boston College already has three in the game. You don't want to see fouls pile up on Smith if you're Evans early in the game, but that's an effort foul, Bill. You know, a foul that's made by going at that offensive board hard. If you're going to get him, that's the place to get him. Troy Bowers will come in next buzzer for Boston College. Bowers, a 6'8 senior from Roselle, New Jersey. Fine leaper. And a man that they've sorely missed inside. He's had foot problems this year. Played 27 minutes the other night against Seton Hall as Boston College overtook the Pirates at the Meadowlands. Boston College working for the shot by Jamie Benton. Good rebound by Ted Kelly. Kelly blocked by Smith. They say it's clean. Lane with the rebound. Gore with the attempt at the other end. A left-handed jam. And the Panthers have their biggest lead, 15-12. Good outlet pass and a good lead feed. Good block by Smith started it. Pitt was triangle and two that time. 
Goodson bumps into Dana Barrows, trying to watch him a little too closely, and quickly the whistles blow, and let's look at the Panthers' transition game started by Charles Smith. Well, BCU, the offensive board, one of the weaknesses of a special defense is you don't get great board coverage, but Smith bails him out. Excellent pass by Jerome Lane and Demetrius doing what he loves to do with the left-hand jam. Lane can run the fast break as well as the Panther guards, especially from the middle of the court. He's got great vision and a great ability to throw that ball one-handed and hold it one-handed, which is one of the keys. Get back in 2-3 zone now. They'll have to keep in touch with number three right on the top. BC working, working. Barry missing. Gore going up with Benton, and Gore fouls Benton on the push. Team foul number two for the Panthers, the first one on Demetrius. Now they got Demetrius with the off arm, and Benton, even though he's only 5'11", 6 feet, as you can see, is a rugged little customer. Check that, team foul number three, so that stat is even. Panthers have spread theirs around. Boston College has done as well. Benton has to chase it, and the Panthers have it. Goodson ahead for Aiken. One man there, but Aiken just lays it in gently. He thought about the step, I think. Well, Scott was tracking him, but uh, wisdom prevailed, and he decided to eliminate any chance of the three-pointer. Boston College turned it over with a bad pass in the corner, and Goodson ended up with the ball and the great assist ahead at the 12-minute mark. Pitt has its biggest lead of five points here in the first half. And this is a key time for BC. They do not want to fall behind Pitt. They want to stay in their zone defense. They want to keep the game tempo. Bad shot. Yep. Powers through the ball. And here come the Panthers with the air ball. BC quickly back. Aiken decides he wants to let it fly. Nope. Rebound. Jerome Wayne, and they lock it away from him, and it goes off his hand out of bounds. The ball belongs to the Boston College Eagles. He trailed by five. Good play by Barrows. He saved what would have been a field goal, because I think Lane was going to dump it down to Smith. Panthers lead at 17-12. We have 11:39 remain. We've got a stoppage of play. Bill Hillgrove and Dave Gavin at Boston Garden will be right back. It is a place to explore the mysteries of nature and the nature of man. A place to marvel at the genius of Monet, Van Gogh, Cassatt, Carnegie Institute. A tribute to man's innate desire to know his world and himself. From the artifacts of man's survival to the survival of man's art, Carnegie Institute is one great performance. Pittsburgh National. We're a bank that believes in performance. <laughs> Is there a greater mind in the game of basketball? Well, you can see he's not eating popcorn. Uh, he's watching this game very intently. No, I don't believe there is. And he's certainly withstood the test of time. A very bright guy and a terrific guy for the game of basketball. And a guy that I've gotten to know very well over the years and certainly have the utmost respect for him. Red Auerbach. There are many reasons that 14 championship banners hang in Boston Garden, but none bigger than the man we just saw. Well, he's the reason they're all hanging there. You know, no, dis no disrespect to Casey Jones or... Bill Russell, Tom Heinz, and other coaches, the one consistent throughout the years has been the old redhead. Early field goal percentages, Pitt 7 for 13 from the floor, Boston College 5 for 9. Pitt out rebounding Boston College 8 to 2, and that's been the difference. And the reason for the Panthers 5 point lead, the Pitt inside game has been strong. Smith and uh, Scott going at it off the ball a little bit. And the play continues. Now Bauer with that little jump hook. A good effort on Scott's part. And BC can't get it to go. And Gore is fouled on the way down. And I think Bowers may have gotten a piece of it. Well, Skip Barry missing the layup after a good effort here. Pitt was in the 1-3 zone and a chaser. BC going inside. Bowers made a good move on Charles Smith. Ball comes off to Barry. And I think, you know, you miss layups like that because you're looking over your shoulder. And that's a... That's a Charles Smith influence, in my opinion. They call the foul on Skip Barry, his first. Demetrius Gore. Smith lost it. Big scrap. Ball is tied up by a pair of feet. <laughs> the feet belonging to Jimmy Benton. He got two legs around the ball, and the ball belongs to the Panthers on alternate possession. Arrow pits way. Smith again does the little things. That time he just wouldn't let go. He kept it alive. And ends 
up with the uh, with the held ball and the possession arrow favors Pitt. Tom Yerke into the game, number 42, a 6'7 sophomore from Northborough, Massachusetts. There is Curtis Aiken hitting from his favorite spot deep in the left corner, and we've got an injury. And it is Demetrius Gore getting a problem up around the face. I think he might have uh, caught a hand or something. And, you know, he had four teeth extracted earlier this year, back in December. He's recovered from that, but he's uh, ever since then been kind of sensitive about any, you know, uh, blows in the face area, which we all are, but I mean, he's particularly sensitive. No, I think he got he got hit in the mouth, and that tends to happen. You recall years ago, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had a serious eye injury, and ever since that time, he's worn the protective goggles that have been his trademark. Rod Brooken into the game for the Panthers. He'll play the small forward spot at 6-5 and a half. The freshman from Steelton. They get, get a good look at the 1-3 zone and the chaser. It starts out, and then Pitt will match up that 1-3 zone. They're trying to take Dana Barrows out of the game and make somebody else beat him, and it's a good, I'd say a good strategy. Goodson off the ball foul uh, as he held Barrows in the baseline. His second, team's fourth. That's that is even, 14 fouls apiece. We're at 10-26 first half. Pitt has its biggest lead of 19-12. to 12. Curtis Aiken now with eight of the 19 points. Dana Barrows unattended. Has to go deep to Jamie Benton. <laughs> now Pitt back in the 2-3 zone on the out-of-bounds. Now they switch back into the 1-3. Yerfi, number 42, had three assists at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse last year as BC took the Panthers down to the wire. Missed shot. Benton puts it back up and misses. And here comes Lane with those long arms, and the Panthers have a three on two. Great bounce pass. Goodson can't do anything with it as Barrows gets there. And the Panthers pull it back up with a seven-point lead. Charles Smith goes up, blocked by Scott. Smith again. This time too hard, Lane, and the Panthers are really crashing the boards. That little flurry didn't make either coach happy. Evans saying, where's the foul? O'Brien saying they're over our back. Fans are getting more into the game now. BC trailing 19-12. Panthers working a little hard. Good job defensively by Bowers. And it ends up that Brooklyn stepped out of bounds. Good job by Bowers to make it happen. Well, this clearly is BC's most effective rebounding lineup. You see Bowers here. He's so important for BC to have Bowers play well. He blocks Smith's shot there with excellent timing. If Bowers can give BC some offense and defense, BC takes on a different look. Yerpe from three-point range. And Bowers with a rebound. Boston College recycles the shot clock. Trailing 19 to 12. Here's the chaser on Dana Barros again. You see Goodson off the ball. Barros had eight points, but all of them early, before the 15-minute mark. They're now down to the nine-minute mark. He hasn't scored for about six minutes. Hasn't scored since they've been in this special defense. There's Bowers with him. Nice jump hook. Troy Bowers, 19 to 14, his first field goal. Got to make Bowers turn the other way. That's his move going in, into the middle, into the lane with that little half hook. You want to make him turn to the baseline and have to take the fall away jump shot. You see fans getting very much into things. Aiken from three point range. Rebound on the other side by the Panthers. Rod Brooken, the freshman from Steelton High Spire. Now, I haven't seen Pitt in person for a while, Bill, but it looks to me like Brooklyn's starting to gain some confidence. Gain some confidence, and he's worked hard on the weight program under the direction of Ray Oliver, as uh, has Jerome Lane. And you can see the difference in those two players particularly. Charging foul, Jamie Benton. Pretty good job by Curtis Aiken. Well, Curtis is very important in this 1-3 zone. He's playing the point out top, and BC will attempt to attack that point in the slots. He's got to make sure that he doesn't let Benton in particular penetrate. That time he moved his feet very well, maintained good position, and drew the charge. That is team foul, number five for Boston College. It has four. Mike Goodson doesn't get Scott out of position at all. Three people collapsing on Smith, so Goodson gets it back, but no on the front rim. Smith lost it. Try to get it back, and here comes BC. Scott ahead to Barrow. Only Goodson back. And almost a steal from behind, but a foul by Aiken. And that will be Aiken's first personal foul. Team foul number five for the Panthers at the 756 mark. Well, that play was really interesting because it started out one on one with, with uh, I think, Brook and back and Barrows coming up the court. But to Pitt's credit, three other blue shirts very quickly got into the picture. And we'll have an official stoppage of play at the 756 mark. Pitt with a seven-point lead, but BC playing hard basketball here at Boston Garden. We'll be back. There's an exciting new way of selling cars today, a way that allows you to have a car that meets your budget needs, yet eliminates the weight of special ordering.
In Valley Buick's design department, countless hours are spent equipping our car with options that can make an ordinary car an extraordinary car, and in more cases than not, for just a few dollars more a month. After all, at Valley Buick, we believe that just because you're on a tight budget, your car shouldn't announce it to the world. The Valley Buick Touch. It's like special ordering without the weight. Something about the night When the stars come out to play The feeling is so right It's my favorite time of the day So give me the night Give me the night Give me a nice sea light Oh, give me the night Give me the night Give me a nice sea light Clear, refreshing and bright The choice is always right So give me the night Give me the night Give me a nice sea light the Plymouth player of the game will be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network as part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East Basketball. 7.56 left first half. The Panthers lead it by seven. Team fouls even at five apiece. Each team has one player, Benton for Boston College and Goodson for the Panthers with two each. Rod Brookins stays in there for Demetrius Gore for the Panthers. Let's call the lineups while we can. For Pitt, the guards, Aiken and Goodson on the front line. It's Smith, Lane, and Brooken. For Boston College on the front line, it'll be Scott, Bowers, and Yerpe. And uh, the guards will be Benton. Is Barros getting? No, Barros is coming out to help Benton out. So that's the ten players on the floor. It looks to me like uh, Gore is okay, though, but I don't think, no, I think he'll be back. He's chewing gum, so if he got hit in the mouth, that's one good sign. I hope he's not chewing a piece of lip or something. Here's <laughs> college just a complete uh, contrast from the style of play known previously on Chestnut Hill. Well, no, Norma Creedy, I and mean, they, they had some big graduation losses. But Jim O'Brien has, in my opinion, done an excellent job coaching this team. He's had them playing really to the fullest of their potential. The problem's been a lack of rebounding. That's where they need Bowers to help. Them. Smith with a block. The Panthers with a transition. Fans wanted a step call on Brooklyn. There's Lane crashing. Jerome Lane. And the Panthers have their biggest lead of nine points. Just think already in this game how many times Pitt has gone at that offensive board and gotten the ball back. I saw the tape of the Georgia Tech BC game played in Tokyo. BC led by nine in the second half with about eight minutes to go and Georgia Tech won the game because BC wasn't able to control the offensive board. That's an interesting, I guess you call it a tournament over there in Tokyo because it only has three teams. Right? Yeah, sort of a round robin. I think uh, Japan is talking to Pitt about not only that, but a football game as well. On the baseline, Jamie Benton has uh, Rod Brooklyn did a good job defensively taking the baseline away. Yes, he did because Benton is a good, solid, quick kid who can handle the ball well and penetrates well. Ted Kelly back in for BC. Jamie Benton gets a rest. Ke Kelly number 10. Kelly's a 6'5 senior from Andover, Mass. Plays both guard and forward. And hit four, four big, real big free throws down the stretch of the uh, Seton Hall game. Goodson double dribbled it. Panthers turn it over. Well, hit with a nine-point lead, but BC at 6'28 has a chance to come down and eat away at that lead. No. Kelly's a fifth-year man, has already gotten his uh, bachelor's degree and is working toward uh, advanced studies. Not a kid that's going to score a lot, but a good, solid, basic player, defends, hits the boards well, sets a lot of screens off the ball, and will, and will uh, very seldom make a mistake. They're pulling Bowers out. Now they're sending back inside. Well, Bill, this defense has really accomplished what Evans set out to do, and it's taken Dana Barrows out of the offensive flow of the game. Steal with Aiken and Lane. Aiken in trouble, gives it up to Kelly, and Kelly misses the layup, and Goodson bats it to Lane, and here come the Panthers with that four on two. Lane. He changed direction, but changed the shot as well. Kelly with a rebound, and here comes Barrows. Look out, Dana Barrows. And a stripping rebound inside by BC. And now we've got a foul by one of the BC players, I believe. Let's see what they call here. I think it's on, I think it's on Pitt. Yep, you're right. BC. On the first rebound. But you saw Barrows there, you know, 15 games into the season, starting to really use the three-point line. He had a two-on-one fast break. He got himself under control, stopped just outside the line, and took the shot. Robert Francis is the new man in at the line, a 6'7 freshman from Cambridge Ringe in Latin. He originally had gone to Marist and transferred now to Boston College. BC cuts it to an eight-point lead. It's 23-15. First time I've seen uh, Francis play this year, honestly. I think he played a couple of games early, but this could be his first Big East action. 
Yep. No, he's no, played he's a couple of big two games, yeah. three minutes. Second shot is good, and it's 23-16. Francis shooting both ends. That was a two-shot foul. Surprisingly, we haven't seen Steve Benton off the BC bench yet. He, he's been coming on in recent games and playing very well for the Eagles. Reggie Pruitt, we will not see tonight. Reggie for BC has a knee problem and is in street clothes tonight. Goodson hasn't shot much tonight, but he did make a jumper earlier. A nice tip outside by Dana Barrows, and Goodson touched it out. It's Boston College basketball as Barrows does a fine job defensively. He did it all. He knocked it away initially. Goodson hustled on the play. Barrows somehow got around him and flicked it back off Goodson's knee out of bounds. Credit Dana Barrows with the whole ball of wax on that one. Walk on guard, Pat Cavanaugh comes in for the Panthers, a 6'2 freshman from Grove City. He was also a quarterback for Mike Godfrey as a walk on candidate. And now we've got a stoppage of play, and Mickey Crowley didn't like the way things were coming down. Jim O'Brien complaining. Now Peter Pavia comes to the scorer's table, and they're worried about. I don't know if they're worried about the 45 second clock or the possession arrow, as you see O'Brien in his first year back at his alma mater, and he was a tough player. I think they're trying to get a Panther substitution straightened out, and I think it involves Demetrius Gore, who now is on the court. And Mickey Crowley apparently says it's a technical foul for a substitution infraction. Apparently a player came in and did not report is what's the bottom line, and so therefore BC will have the right to a technical foul, and now we have the discussion at the pit bench with assistant coaches Mark Coleman and Norm Law talking to Mickey Crow. You see Paul Evans, he's decided to stay out of it. Technical foul on the Panthers. Too many men on the floor. Somebody came in and somebody didn't come out. I didn't pick that up, did you? No. I think Gore was involved, though. I think he probably should have gone out of the game and stayed, and then somebody else reported and sat down, and that was the infraction. So Barros does the Panthers a favor by missing the tick. And the Demetrius. Panthers lead it 23-16. I heard you call Kavanaugh coming in, but I honestly never looked to see whether anyone was going out. That's right. I did not see who was headed for the bench, and I think it should have been Gore, and then finally, I think uh, Brooklyn snuck out of it. Actually, uh, he did a good job playing six on five. Didn't get scored on, did they? <laughs> Barry outside with Kelly. Two big guards now for BC. Barrows being the third. He's playing the baseline. Good steal for Aiken. Not a good pass by Francis. Curtis Aiken decides to take matters into his own hands. Misses a back attempt, and the Panthers crash the boards and foul. Gore was on the back of Robert Francis. Well, BC did a good job defending that. Up. Uh, I think that a lot of people say, well, why didn't they can give it up? They really forced him to shoot the ball. And to Curtis's credit, he read it properly, gathered himself, got himself under control, did everything right except didn't get the banker to go. 452, and BC goes into the bonus situation. This is a one and one for Robert Francis. Not Kavanaugh committed the foul. They didn't give it to Gore. Francis first is good. He'll get the bonus. He cuts the lead to six points now. Panthers leading 23-17. Francis is free, three for three in the free throw shooting department. How about four for four? And the Panther lead is now down to five. It was up to nine points. You see in zone all the way. Stay there now. 3-2 with Barry on the point. Ball goes to size, he'll drop down in the middle, making it look like a 2-3 zone. They'll pack it inside. Kavanaugh works the point for the Panthers. Smith off balance, and he's fouled from behind by Bowers. Troy Bowers picks up personal foul number one. That's team foul number six for BC, so one more, and the Panthers will duck into the bonus. We're at the 434 mark. Pitt leading by five, 23-18. You know, watching Charles Smith play, I, I'm sure that he'd love to see less people surrounding him when he catches the ball, but the fact that he draws so much attention has helped to make him a better player, Bill, in my opinion. He's a much better passer now than he was in his first two years. Curtis Aiken from deep in the corner. Lane on the push-off, and Jerome Lane fouls. Hit Kelly from behind, and Lane has picked up personal foul number one. And so they'll walk down to shoot the one-and-one, one, will the Boston College Eagles, and they've got a chance to chip away further at the Panther five-point lead. Mike Goodson comes back into the pit lineup. He'll give Curtis Aiken a rest. BC's field goal shooting to this point, six for 16. But they're chipping away at the foul line. Well, that's primarily because Pittsburgh's defense has kept them on the perimeter. They've really only had a couple of good opportunities to score inside. Francis, five for five, and it's 
Pitt has not scored since way back uh, around the seven minute mark. Francis like the designated free throw shooter. He comes from uh, good basketball tradition at Cambridge Ridge and Latin High School up the river here. Patrick Ewing. He's going to drop a name. That's not a bad one to drop. Second shot is good. He's six for six. It is 23-20. BC getting closer. Bowers out. Scott back in now for the Eagles. Look at the crowd around Smith. So Gore pops open from three-point range but misses. And here comes BC with another rebound. Gore's been front rimming the ball a lot on his jump shot tonight, Bill, which normally means he need a little more, a bit more knee bend. All right, here's the box and one now. They switch from one three, one box and one. And just falling off balance, I guess, is Robert Francis on a pretty good pass. It looked like uh, Ted Kelly, but he just couldn't, uh, they couldn't get on the same page. And we've got another official stoppage of play at the 359 mark. Well, the Panthers enjoyed a nine-point lead, 23-14, but it's now 23-20. Still first half. And Al here tells me I got a real good shot at a 600-pound Marlin. I better, because he's charging me an arm and a leg for the privilege. But with Piedmont's low winter fares, I figure I've already saved a bundle. So whether you want to go deep sea fishing in Florida or ice fishing in Minnesota, just call Piedmont. Hey, hey, the fare's this low. You won't catch me sitting around this winter. Whoa! Are you okay? This is a marlin? Is this one of them Japanese imports? Hi, Coach Premier. Mitsubishi built Colt Premier. It's fun to drive. Oh, Tomashina! Has the boost of optional turbo. Sugoi turbo da! It's luxurious. Kokatana! And imported only for Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge dealers. Colt. Sayonara! It's all the Japanese you need to know. Is that Japanese? It's Tokyo in Japan. Huh? had a nine-point lead, but BC has just kind of scraped and clawed and hung around and shot foul shots well and has made the best of the bonus. And now the Eagles trail by only three and are going, taking a pretty good run at the Panthers. Uh, I, you've heard me say before, Bill, that I think teams tend to take on the personality of their coach many times. Certainly the Pitt team. Tough, hard nose, no nonsense, very basic and do it well. Reflects Paul Evans' approach to the game. BC, O'Brien was a heck of a player at BC. And a tough, tenacious competitor. Played in the ABA. And that's the way this team is playing. They're a little bit undersized and a longer man. They put their teeth in you, they won't let go. Goodson didn't hesitate, and that's a big field goal for the Panthers. That kind of breaks a drop. Well, they need some consistent outside shooting. I think it's interesting to see that both Curtis Aiken and Demetrius Gore, since conference play has started, have not shot the ball nearly as well as they did in December. Panthers averaging about 15 points less than they did before the conference play started. Benton missing. Lane got a piece of it, and Kavanaugh ends up with it for the Panthers. Panthers three on three, and Kavanaugh wisely decides to hold it up. Charles Smith wants to shoot the jump shot. A little short. And here comes Bowers with a, no, Barrows with a rebound as he wheels out of there. Bowers is not in the lineup right now for Coach Jim O'Brien and the Boston College Eagles. Very missing. Good rebound for Scott over Smith. Now the Panthers get into their transition game, but Goodson was leaning the wrong way. Kavanaugh can shoot. Pat Kavanaugh makes it 27-20. The Panthers with two straight baskets. His first of the night. Well, that came off the transition fast break game. They run the lane. They get the man to the corner. Kavanaugh was there in the right spot. Kavanaugh have Barrows in the box. No, they're matched up. Kavanaugh playing a man to man. There's, they're, they're matching up out front in the zone. And what do they call? They call Kavanaugh for reaching in, I believe. Lead official John Letcher calls Kavanaugh for the foul, and DC will shoot a one and one. 26 remaining first half, Pitt with a seven-point lead. The choice was Kavanaugh or Smith, so Pat didn't complain. He took the foul. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he looked for the official. Yeah, he raised his hand, right, volunteered. Francis, seven for, no, I'm sorry, six for six from the line. Whoops. And that one got away a little bit. Sort of brick ball. I mean, that sure didn't look like the guy that just hit nothing but net in the first six, did it? Maybe he hurt him. Maybe I better quiet down a little bit. Well, announcer's free throw jinx. <laughs> Francis 
Francis, the transfer from Mars, makes amends, and it's 27-21. Panther lead us at 20. 2.23 left of the half. Kavanaugh getting a good long stint here. Bill. Kavanaugh working the point. Goodson works at two guards. Goodson from the baseline showing excellent touch. The Panthers lead it 29-21. Back up to eight. Good move. Pitt has drilled two from that corner. Now BC needs to get some offense out of, out of Skip Barry. They need another outside shooter to go against this defense. And Brooker trying to overplay Barry. Bumps into him. And so Barry will go to the foul line. Skip Barry, 6'7 junior from Nashville, New Hampshire. On Rod Brooken. Second foul. Uh, Barry is a 78% foul shooter. Well, Barry is a kid that, that that's been an enigma to me. He's a, he's a good, tough, hard-working kid. He shot the ball real well as a freshman at BC out of Nashville, New Hampshire, but he's really struggled shooting the ball the last two years. Well, they wanted to get Steve Benton into the game, but he'll have to wait now as Barry misses. And the Panthers come fourth court. Brooklyn lost it to Barry, and here comes BC with their fast break. Danny Benton to Dana Barrows. Missing off the front rim, and Barrows gets the rebound long and goes up again, and Barrows breaks a long scoring drop that lasted, uh, by gosh, 15 minutes. Well, that's that's about the time that Evans put them into the 1-3 zone in a chase, and it wasn't the Barrows wasn't hitting. He couldn't get any shots. 29-23. Panther lead is six. We have a minute 29 left in the first half. Off the ball. Smith and Barry, and Smith commits the foul. Charles Smith commits his... I'm not sure. I think they went the other way with it. Oh, they did. You're exactly right. But, it, you know, judging by the reaction by Smith, I thought he got the foul, the foul call against himself. Now, you'll see the, the call coming up right here by Pete Pavi, who's in excellent position. There's the call right there. And I think he got Skip for using the hands to try to get around him. Smith, to his credit, pivoted very well to keep him sealed once he had it on the reversal of the ball. One and one for the Panthers. They go into the bonus here at the 126 mark first half. Charles Smith, the 6'10 junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut, gets the roll. And the Panthers now open up a 30 to 23 seven point lead. Charles Smith on the season, a 74% foul shooter. 60% field goal shooter overall, but 51% in the Big East, which is, you know, you can just see that the traffic has affected his play. Well, he, he'll draw a lot of attention. I think he's a player that uh, uh, people in this conference have a lot of respect for, and they're going to want to make someone else other than Charles Smith beat them. And Evans giving Barros the same kind of respect tonight with this with the chaser defense, and uh, he's alternated Goodson, Aiken, and Kavanaugh on Dana. If two Benton's not related as the guards. Great steal for Brooking. Look out, Rod Brooking, rock and Rod. Steal from the fire, the freshman. And the Panthers have their biggest lead, 10 points at the one-minute mark. That was not what Jim O'Brien had in mind for the last minute and a half and a half. I'm sure he would like to have gotten in the locker room in single digits. Panthers lead at 33-23, 48 seconds on the game clock, 30 seconds on the shot clock. Steve Benton, number 24 outside. Turns and gives it Bowers. Bowers blocked by Smith, but gets it back. So the shot clock is dark now, and we have 32 seconds on the game clock. First half. Now, Jamie Benton used up a dribble, and wisely, Pat Cavanaugh got there to try to disrupt it. I see the time winding down. They've got the ball in Barros's hands. You know, one of the problems when, when you get a chaser like on a player like Barros, not only do you take his scoring out of the game, you take his creativity out of the game. And so Pitts accomplished two things. And really cutting down Dana Barros' effectiveness here. They haven't been able to get him the ball. And Lane got a piece of the ball, and Jamie Benton picks it up. Jamie Benton at the buzzer. Jamie Benton. Cuts the lead out of double digits, and that's the end of the first half here at Boston Garden. Panthers lead it by a score of 33-25. Joe Hillgrove and Dave Gabbitt will wrap up the first half in just a moment. Nine of our student athletes competed in the Olympics. Six of our baseball teams have qualified for postseason play. We've had over 100 All-Americans in men's and women's track and field. We had the NCAA soccer champion in 1981. We've sent a women's basketball team to the NCAAs the past four years. We're a lot more than just men's basketball. We're the Big East Conference. In a city full of sports, one team covers the best. Channel 4's Front 4. You'll get the scores from people who not only talk a good game, but are really into the game. 
bring you close to the action where you can feel the pressure, see the sweat. And when the game's over and the hard questions begin, the front four really goes to work. For a little lift or a big win, wherever sports happens, the front four will be there. Action news is in our latest visit to area schools, we took SkyCam 4 to Fairview Elementary School in the Fox Chapel Area School District, and we were welcomed by 260 students from kindergarten to the sixth grade. This school is very proud of their extensive library, which has over 12,000 books, and these students ask some of the best questions of the year. Next, I'll continue my weekly school visits with a trip to J.A. Allard Elementary School in Moon Township. Every team has its star player, but no one can win the game alone. Hi, I'm Mario Lemieux of the Pittsburgh Penguins, asking you to be on my team, Lemieux's Legion. And our opponent, it's epilepsy. That's some pretty tough competition. But I won't be worried if you were on my team. Join me and together we'll score the winning goal against epilepsy. Call the Epilepsy Foundation of Western Pennsylvania at 6870644. With your help, we can make it a winning season for everyone with epilepsy. Pittsburgh has a growing need for blood to help save lives. I'm Peter Graves. Demand for blood is outpacing blood donations. 93% of us will need a blood transfusion sometime in our lives. That blood must be available. Please donate blood or make a pledge to donate by calling the Central Blood Bank of Pittsburgh. When you give blood, you give life. have an eight-point lead at halftime. They held, held Dana Barrows to ten points at halftime, but the important thing was that the particular attention that they paid to him with both Goodson and Pat Kavanaugh kept him scoreless for about 15 minutes until he finally hit one toward the end of the half. And I think, you know, the defense was very effective. To Dana Barrows' credit, he didn't make any mistakes in that period of time. Didn't try to force it, but the other thing the defense accomplishes, it takes Barrows out of the passing part of their offense, too. BC needs to compensate for that by going inside, and unfortunately for Boston College, when they went inside, there wasn't a lot of answers there. And the drop-off between Barrows with 10 points, the next uh, level, you're at uh, Jamie Benton with four of the Panthers. Meantime, got eight points from Aiken, seven from Lane, six from Smith, and uh, that's the kind of scoring that they need. Well, I thought the key for Pitt, too, was that they were they were patient at the other end. BC's a defensive team that will play it intact and really work hard in defending the inside. Uh, Charles Smith created a lot of scoring opportunities in the first half by punching the ball out of the pivot, and I thought that they did a good job of keeping the ball alive on the offensive board. Panthers owned the board. 19 to 14, but BC did a better job in the late stages of the first half off the board. They did. One of the things that I think a 1-3 zone or a triangle and 2 does is that it delineates the rebounding responsibilities a little bit. BC recognized that. You know, when you do something that works one side, you're going to give up a little something the other way. But overall, I thought the 1-3 uh, the and a chase was really the story of the first half for Pitt. Panthers have a first half lead of 33-25, an eight-point advantage here at Boston Garden. Monday night, the Panthers travel to Syracuse to the Carrier Dome to take on the seventh-ranked Orangemen. Two players who have come to their own for Syracuse and Coach Jim Boeheim this season are co-captains Greg Monroe and Howard Trish. For the past three years, when Big East fans thought of Syracuse basketball, names like Addison, Alexis, and Washington always came to mind. This season, however, the Orange Men will be led by a couple of seniors who have been primarily role players in the past. Greg Monroe and Howard Trish are the Syracuse co-captains, and each has prepared himself for the challenge of now being a leader. The last three years, I was kind of a quiet type of guy. Uh, worked very hard, but just went, went at it, really didn't, uh, wasn't into the hoopla as much, I guess you could say. Kind of kept my emotions inside, but, you know, I was feeling it, but I never really showed it. This year, I'm a lot more vocal and trying to explain things uh, to, to some of the younger guys and uh, let them be aware uh, some of the things are going to be coming up. I think so. I think at this point now, where I'm ready to, uh, to go on as a... a as an individual uh, outside in society and uh, I think you know where take me to graduate studies where I want to be in management I think you know I have to accept the leadership role uh, later and so this is definitely a good opportunity right now you know to show that I have some leadership quality and you know expand upon them both Trish and Monroe have become used to playing out of the spotlight 
but now as the leaders of a young Orange Men team, they see the opportunity to put their own stamp on what already is a rich Syracuse basketball tradition. Especially with uh, the hype not being there this year, uh, I can remember my freshman year, uh, the hype wasn't there either, and we had a pretty good year. Uh, went a lot further than people thought, and yeah. Dwayne's freshman year also, but uh, I think this year, if we if we can do something, then uh, I think Howard, myself, and our teammates will, will be recognized. Uh, uh, it's tough. I, I think in Syracuse, uh, you don't need the hype. There's enough hype right there. There's nothing else for those, those fellows to write about. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get the other pressures from some of the guys outside. It, it can be a lot on a team, a uh, very young team. Uh, so I think we're going to be all right, though. I think we'll be ready to go when the time is to come. Though both Trish and Monroe are fine college players, neither is banking on a career in the NBA. That makes the 86-87 season all that much more important. This could be the last go around, and uh, you want to finish up strong. You want to, you know, try to have some fun your last year. And yeah, so when you look back on it, you, hopefully you didn't have a down senior year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you always want to go out on a bang. The years at Syracuse have been good ones for both Trish and Monroe. And if you ask him if there were one thing they'd change, they both have the same answer. Probably shoot a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> the Orangemen hung on to defeat St. John's by one this afternoon. Meanwhile, the Panthers have an eight-point lead over BC at halftime. We'll be back right after this. Remember this all-time favorite? Yes, it's Ed Norton and the Mouseketeer song. Now classics like this can be yours when you tune in to the Honeymooners. You'll get Ralph and Ed doing Rag Mop. The unforgettable raccoon song. Strolling through the park. Strolling through the park one day. In the merry, merry month He's of May. too fat. I don't want him. You can have him. He's too fat for me. I shut up. The beautiful Brothers Under the Pell. In the West and in the East, there's a mighty little beast. And Go dozens more. Mighty din. Take Not advantage of this exclusive television offer and enjoy the greatest hit life. of The Honeymooners. The Honeymooners, 11.30 tonight on Channel 4. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Charles. There are 35 million people with disabilities in America today. Do you know what we want out of life? Well, the same things you do. To participate, to use our abilities to the fullest. That means being able to get in and out of places you want to go if you use a wheelchair. Having signs in Braille. Getting extra learning help to do the job you want to do. It means being included. And because this is a decade of disabled persons, the National Organization on Disability urges us all to lend a hand right in our own communities. All you have to do is pick up your phone and dial this number. 1-800-248-ABLE. Let's put our abilities to work so that all America and Americans gain. Do it now. I thank you. When you graduate from college, what will you be able to offer an employer? I like working with people. I really like working with people. I really like people. I'm a people person. I'm eager. I'm eager. Eager. I think I'm eager. And I was president of five... Offer an employer something meaningful, practical work experience. A nationwide college program called Co-op Education can give you that competitive edge. And I'd even relocate. Right, Co-op Education. It's the experience you need for the job you want. have an eight-point lead over Boston College here at halftime at Boston Garden. Hello again, everybody. I'm Bill Hillgrove, and joining me at halftime is Pitt Athletic Director Dr. Edward Bozick. Dr. Bozick, everybody seems to be talking about some sweeping rule changes that have taken place in college athletics recently. Well, Bill, we had the recent NCAA convention, and a number of changes that have occurred there, there are a number occur every year. Uh, looking at basketball in particular, uh, there was a change that uh, eliminated the part-time assistant coach. Uh, we voted against that primarily because we felt it 
work some inequities uh, the way the rule was actually changed. Some teams will be able to retain their coach if he's on a long-term contract. Other teams who are on a year-to-year -year contract will not be able to. The other major rule change in basketball was the reduction of scholarships from 15 to 13. That was inevitable. If it didn't happen there, it was going to happen in the president's convention. Uh, while I know my coach, Paul Evans, doesn't agree with me, uh, if you look historically at the Big East, you'll find that most of the teams do not operate with 15 scholarships. In fact, are, the average is about 12.5 over the years. The other major change was the involvement of alumni in recruiting, or in fact, the disinvolvement or disengagement. Again, it's a rule that I find is almost unenforceable. Uh, you can't have alumni make telephone calls or write letters or visit with or contact students on campus or off. Hopefully, our, I know our middle alumni will follow the rule, but again, it's on those rules, it's almost unenforceable. Coaches are hoping that combined with the reduction of scholarships that the presidents in June do not vote to uh, eliminate freshman eligibility. That would really be crippling. Well, I don't think you can do both. I don't think you can reduce the number of scholarships and eliminate freshmen from eligibility. I don't think the mood is right for freshmen in eligibility right now because it would, it would take the teeth out of Proposition 48, and I don't think the presidents want to do that. Ed Bozick, quickly, what about tickets for the Syracuse game? Uh, is it going to sell out February 9th at the Civic Arena? Well, we have uh, about uh, 1,000 tickets remaining, Bill, and I'm, I'm certain it's going to sell out, but I hope our fans will get up there and, and take them up pretty quick. Well, I hope the Panthers do well again in the second half and hold on to that lead, and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. All right, and hope you enjoy your trip to Beantown here. The Panthers lead 33-25 over Boston College in Big East action here at Boston Garden. We'll be back to the garden, this venerable basketball palace, right after this. Investing these days is a little like you playing tennis against Jimmy Connors. You're going to need all the professional help you can get. Payne Weber's capital management team is ready to provide that help right now. Because whether you run a company or invest in one, Payne Weber believes the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Hey, great match. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, Payne Weber. Next time I'm with those guys on my team, okay? We want to thank all of you for making this year's Weekend with the Stars telethon for cerebral palsy a huge success. We sure do. We received many more pledges than last year, and now we are counting on you to mail your contributions in two days. Help the children and the adults who have cerebral palsy and send your contributions to United Cerebral Palsy, Pittsburgh National Bank, Department L622P, Pittsburgh, 15264. And again, thanks. It's a Big East Bonanza at the Civic Arena on February 9th when Pitt hosts nationally ranked Syracuse. See Paul Evans and his exciting Panther stars square off against the Orangemen, the cream of the Big East crop and one of the top teams in the country. To order tickets, just call the Pitt ticket office at 648-8300 and order by phone with Visa or MasterCard. That's Pitt versus Syracuse on February 9th at the Civic Arena. Big East basketball at its finest. Welcome to the game show that's more fun than... Playing tennis in bed. <laughs> more exciting than... A Ferrari in my driveway, honey. And more good, clean fun than ever. Delta, do all mammals have tongues? Well, yes, all the ones I've known, yes. <laughs> Delta! Well... Go ahead, whoop it up with your favorite stars. We'll even double your fun with twin contestants on the Hollywood Squares. The stars come out on Hollywood Squares Monday night at 7.30. Big East Basketball is brought to you by Piedmont, serving more cities in the East than any other airline. By Chrysler Motors, the official car and truck of the Big East, and your local Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge dealers. By Avis rent car the official rental car of the Big East Conference. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber. Grove and Dave Gavitt here at Boston Garden. The Panthers have a 33-25 eight-point halftime lead, and one of the reasons they were able to do that, they held Dana Barrows to 10 points. When I say hold him to 10 points, they were able to keep him quiet for a while. You can't keep him down. No, he's a tough, tough little guy, and he knows how to play the game, uses screens very well. He's an excellent, deep three-point shooter. 
You'll see him here taking the feed. He gets the defense coming toward him. Good strong move to the right and drills it downtown. But the 1-3 zone and the chaser limited his opportunities in the second half of the half. Boston College got within three and the Panthers came up with a big play and it was by freshman Rod Brooken. Well, I think I commented to you at the time that I think I haven't seen Pitt in person for a while, Bill, but Brooken is certainly playing with a lot more confidence. Uh, and I think in, when you play the kind of schedule that Pitt plays in the Big East and their non-conference schedule, when you get 15 or so, 17 games into the schedule, freshmen aren't freshmen anymore. Panthers actually did not shoot as well from the floor as BC did, but uh, in the rebound department, the Panthers had a slight edge, and there are the field goal percentages. No, that's got to be wrong, that percentage, I would think, if, uh, 8 for 26. Well, significant, too. I think Pitt had six more shots. That's on the offensive board. The three-pointers, BC's favor early, and then they limited Barrows. Free throws, uh, Francis for BC, the big story there. And the rebounds, uh, BC did a pretty good job to hang. But Pitt did a good job, uh, I think, uh, in the steals. And the nine turnovers for BC's a lot, Bill. And some of that is because they had to have other people other than Dana Barrows handling the ball. Two first-year coaches. There's Paul Evans, the University of Pittsburgh, having moved over from Navy. And the Panthers will play defense as BC has the ball on alternate possession. Kelly inbounding to Barrows. And here we go. Pitt leading by eight. Here's the 1-3 zone and a chaser again now. O'Brien needs some scoring out of that guy right there. And he got some. Skip Barry, 33-27. Skip Barry, a 6'7 junior, his first two points of the evening. Boston College with their starting lineup. Same way they started the game. They start out in the 1 2 2 zone. They'll bend it and shape it, try to match Pitt. Goodson with confidence, three point play. And the Panthers now extend the lead to 35 27. Nope, they, they call it a three point play. I saw Peter Pavia put the two hands up, but they only put two up on the board. Did you see the official hold two hands? No, up? I didn't. Okay, so it's 35 27. I thought he delivered the home run signal, but Goodson will settle for two. You know, the problems for the officials here tonight is the three point line set in black and every other line's white. Now they call a charge on Jamie Benton and Jim O'Brien, as you can see, not real pleased. Uh, he didn't agree. The replay, you can decide for yourself. Did the defensive man have position at the time contact was established? Was he there before? I'd say he did. Curtis Saken, that's the second charge he's picked up. Panthers uh, have Smith coming out from the blocks now. Evans is arguing the three-point call over on the other side. I, I, if it's outside the black line, I'm pretty sure that's where he was when he tried it. Correctable error. Now they go back to the bench, and Mickey Crowley, and uh, he was the official involved in that incident in Dayton a couple of years ago in a playoff situation where they checked the... Yep, okay, exactly. Evans. And that's the rule that's been so controversial, UNLV Oklahoma. There's another rule that bears on it. It says that a correctable error must be stopped before the next dead ball or before the ball's put in play after the dead ball. Evans got it while the game was going on. Jerome Lane. Nice move by Lane. That's a difficult angle to do what he did. Lead goes to 11 on a power move inside by Lane. Biggest lead of the game for the Panthers at the 18-32 mark. Barry goes wide open and gets his second in a row. He's got all the BC points in the second half, all four, and it's 38-29. Evans trying to make some adjustments. He wants Gore to fight over that down screen and get on the other side of it. Lane over Barry. And Barry had no choice but to foul, according to lead official Peter Potter. Here's the look in now. Nice lob pass. Barry got there to the lake. Good call. Violating verticality. You exactly. have a right to your space, but nobody else's. Right. You gotta have it, you gotta have it established. And Skip just didn't get across the lane quite in time as Jerome hits the first one. Jerome has come on as a free throw shooter of late, making 27 of his last 33 attempts in uh, competition, and now uh, continues to shoot it well from the line. Jerome's come on as a player. He really has. He's really had some year. I think. Jerome Lane now makes it 40 to 29. Pitt again by 11, and Jerome has 11. Panthers uh, playing zone for everybody but Paris. And there's Barry with his third in a row, and it's 40 to 31. That's an adjustment that O'Brien obviously made at the half, and that time Pitt worked on Gore on the other side, and they went to the other side. First time Lane had seen that down screen. Charles Smith has come out of the blocks now to play a center post spot. Lane playing the low post. 
Charles wants to take that J. How about that, folks? Well, there's one that Red Auerbach might appreciate. Charles can do it inside. He can do it outside. 42-31. Hit again by 11. And Smith now. His first field goal. Six points for Smith. There's the screen. That time Lane fought over it. It's a 1-3 zone, but they're matching it up. And the down screen on the other side. And that time a little forced by Smith. Smith lost the rebound. Kelly comes up with it. Great pass inside to Barry. Barry carried him up inside and out, and it's 42-33. Barry has all eight second-half points for the Eagles. And those are the quiet contributions, Bill, that a Ted Kelly makes for you. The coach's kind of player. Picks up the loose ball. Always around the right place. Michael Goodson to Lane. Smith over everybody. Charles Smith and B.C. hard pressed to match anybody up with him. Well, Evans has done an interesting thing. He sort of inverted this half, too. He put Jerome Lane down on the blocks, and by getting Smith coming down the gut, he's gotten him more involved in the offense. Something he wasn't really much involved in against St. John's on Monday night. He was 4 for 14, and I would say Charles got to shoot more than 14 times. As long as they're the right shots. I agree. He took the last one and just wouldn't go. He came up short. Claims he was fouled on the play, but no situations. You don't hear the whistle too often. Benton just threw it up there. And here come the Panthers, a little transition. A lot of white shirts back. Nobody on board. Basket and foul. And Evans is pleased. Well, Gore showed you the strength and power that time. He went up and got hit, and he rode through it and still put the ball up softly. There it is. There's the foul, and yet he pulls it back and continues through with it and gets the soft touch. D.C. didn't have time to set their defense, and Gore took advantage of it and got the foul as well. They assessed the foul to Ted Kelly, his first. 16-09 remaining. The Panthers have their biggest lead, 13 points. Based on letters received at the Department of Transportation, the airline with one of the lowest passenger complaint records is Piedmont. In a recent poll, the airline rated highest in service was Piedmont. And in another poll, Piedmont service came in second, although it wasn't even listed on the ballot, which suggests the greatest service Piedmont performs, serving as role model for all the other airlines. Piedmont, a model of how good an airline can be. He's gonna love it. As long as we're not late for the meeting. This is gonna whiz us right there. Hey, this, we got a red hot express. We got a red hot express. We got a red hot crew. We got a red hot crew. We got super value rates. We try harder to. Hey, this, we're red hot for you. I love it. But what's it gonna cost? Don't worry, we'll give you a super value rate. Hey, this, hey, this. the Eagles gathered around first-year coach Jim O'Brien, an alumnus of Boston College and a fine player in his day, not only in college basketball, but also in the pros. He was uh, at one time a member of the Pittsburgh Condors in his rookie season, 1971. Played for former Providence coach Joe Mulaney in, uh, in the ABA for a while. Demetrius Gore on the three-point try will step to the line to try to convert the three-pointer, which would push the path to lead to 14. Gore on the season, the junior from Detroit, 82% from the line. Best Panther figure. Nothing but net, 47-33. Again, you see Pitt with a special coverage on, on Barrows. They've not only limited his, his scoring opportunities, but they've also made other people handle the ball, and because of that, BC had an uncharacteristically high nine turnovers in the first half. Four of those by Jamie Benton, number 11, who works the win. What a marvelous athlete. Could have probably played football for Boston College uh, and Coach Jack Picknell. Yeah, there's a little recruiting battle at the time between Picknell and Gary Williams. Nice move by Troy Bowers. That's the thing that could make BC somebody that no one in the Big East Conference would like to see in the first round at Madison Square Garden if they can get Bowers really into the game. Troy Bowers at 6 feet 8, the senior from Roselle, New Jersey, has four points. Michael Goodson. And when he hits the bottom of the net, the Panthers just open things up. I don't care which opponent they're playing. And He's in this case, Boston College just hard-pressed to overload Smith on the inside and come out and, and try to check the jumper. It's going back to the 2-3 now. Well, 
Mike Goodson certainly a much different basketball player than the last time I saw Pitt in person against Illinois. Well, Skip Barry, he's red hot, 49-37. BC Bench wants three, no signal. Barry with 10 all here in the second half. Goodson has 11 for the Panthers. I think Evans did a good move coming out of the defense and accomplished its purpose, but you can't stay with that kind of a defense too long. Well, sooner or later, any offense is going to adjust to a degree to a defense, and so you've got to keep changing. And, and a special defense like that is going to take away something that's going to give something. Lane missed it, then Gore missed it. Lane got a clear rebound, and somebody from Boston College reached in. Let's see who that is. I think they're through the lead official. I think they're going to call it on Barry. He got him on the way up, and then Scott got a good block on the play, but it was after the foul. He has four, does Skip Barry, and that's a problem for Boston College. And he quickly heads for the bench as coming into the game again is Steve Benton, number 24. Steve Benton with a big effort uh, against Syracuse a couple of weeks ago. Interestingly, for Pitt fans watching this game, Bill, this is BC's fourth Big East game here in the Boston Garden. They led Villanova by 12. Third Big East game. They led Villanova by 12 at the half before falling late in the game and had Syracuse uh, in a barn burner with five minutes to go. They've played hard against everybody, just to uh, have uh, uh, let things get away at the end with the exception of the Seton Hall game, where they got their first win. And that had to be a boost for the Eagles and Coach Jim O'Brien. And that, of course, was Seton Hall coming off the second conquest of Georgetown. P.J. has to be saying to his club, where are we? Nice jumper that time. And up and in for Jamie Benton. That's his third field goal, six point. And it's 50 to 39, Panther lead of 11. See Pitt with a little change in offense again. Now Lane, low, Smith, high. Lane, low. And who touched it? It was Benton who touched it. The ball belongs to the Panthers. So many times that ball will be touched by an offensive player after the ball is deflected by the defender. Bacon found Lane. Lane tried to get it home, but Bowers hung on him, and so Lane will shoot two. From Lane at the line tonight is four for five. And he's got 12 points. And for Bowers, that's personal foul number two. Team foul in the second half for Boston College. It's now team foul number three. Panthers have four team fouls. Is that correct? Oh, I gotta be, I gotta be completely wrong. It's five to nothing. I was looking at the wrong number on the board, and I apologize. Well, that's a confusing board. It There's really is. Some hockey numbers up there from this afternoon from the 1939 season. <laughs> Demetrius Gore on the jumper from the lane. And if he can catch fire, the Panthers will be hard to catch. But we still have a lot of time. 13-30. Pitt now leading 53-39. Their second 14-point advantage. Pitt now in the 2-3 zone. Trying to match up up front. Still paying a little special attention to Bowers. On the blocks, it is Bowers, but he's hacked on the way up there. And let's see who the foul belongs to. Either Smith or Gore. So. Demetrius Gore on the arm, they said. They got Gore. There's, there's the bounce pass in. Now as he turns, you'll see Gore snap back inside right there. Yep. Got him. If you catch the hand, if it's attached to the basketball, it's no foul. But if you catch the arm, you're sending somebody to the line. Well, Bowers on the season, 6'8 senior from Roselle, New Jersey, a 58% foul shooter, but shows good form right there. BC cuts it to 53-40. Versus Bowers makes the second. We've been talking about how they need more contributions from him. He's been hurt, I think, in fairness. You know, the, the Pittsburgh area fans watching this talk, as may not know that they've not really had his services, but for about 40% of the season. Good denial that time by Bowers. He knocked it away from Gore, but interesting that they would put Gore and try to post him up on the right-hand block. And they slid him down that time on the inversion. Smith in the lane. He hangs people up. And one of them commits the foul. I believe it's Bowers. And if it is, it's his third. And that is the indication from referee John Wetcher. 13.03 remaining. Pitt leading 53-41. Team fouls for Boston College. Now six. The Panthers have committed only one in the second half. And people say, well, why the disparity in fouls? Because Pitt's playing zone. And they've obviously got some size advantages inside. And Evans 
doesn't want a lot of fouls under his defensive philosophy with a team that's not particularly deep on the bench. Uh, they've got to be careful, and they have been careful in this game. One of the reasons Jim O'Brien has gone to the deliberate style, I think he feels comfortable with it, but also he doesn't feel that he's got enough players to run all night. He doesn't have that big a bench. You know, especially when he started the season out with Bowers out of the lineup, he knew he wasn't going to be a strong rebounding team. I think Jim O'Brien would run a lot more transition if the personnel were different, but you can't pass break unless you've got rebounding strength. Gore with the steal, and Steve Benton reaches in and says, you're not going anywhere, and he commits the foul on Gore, and that sends the Panthers into the bonus. Pretty early for the bonus of 12.49, but leading by 14. Indeed, and that was not really a good foul. Sometimes you can make a foul on a transition situation that, that will save you a deuce, but but clearly I don't think that Pitt had the numbers in their favor that time, and Stevie Benton just went into it. Charles Smith is now double figures, having made six of six. Gore's one for one, his seventh point. Make it eight, he'll get another. As he shoots the one and one here, 12:49. It's interesting watching Gore at the free throw line, Bill. He's got, you know, he's really got good form, good rotation on the ball as he cans them both. And yet his jump shot has been like a rat. He's had trouble, trouble nailing it consistently. Don't you think it's possible that Demetrius and some of the other players, but maybe Demetrius has shown it more clearly, uh, has had trouble ingesting Paul Evans' system, and maybe it has caused him to think more than react? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I'd say if it has, the plus is it's still a plus. It's been much and he had to do it over Smith because Smith was coming after him, and he did it and just held his trajectory. And a fine shot by Jamie Benton cuts it to 57-43. Now we got a whistle underneath. And the foul by the Panthers. Going to be on Lane. So Mickey Crowley with the sign. It's 3-4, Jerome Lane. His second. Just to follow up that thought on Gore, I think you've got a good point there. I would say in balance, however, that Evans is doing the right thing because he's taken a lot of the turnovers and a lot of the forces out of Demetrius Gore's game uh, that, I, that I believe from a year ago. So the confidence. He just has to cross the line. Yeah, just going to play his way through it. Nice back shot in there by Steve Benton. Did a good job going inside. Now that's Benton's game. He's a penetrator, and he, he's 6'4", and he's physical. Good athlete, and he comes off the bench firing with a lot of confidence. He's going to stay in front of him. Panthers lead by 12. Gore. Great pass, and Lane takes care of the rest. And those are the kind of things that will get Gore off the mark, you know? It's not all scoring. You rebound, you pass, you play defense. And I think that's uh, the message that he's getting. That was a real nice feed. Great step in by Troy Bowers. And the Panthers just had to back out because he had the thing lost. Well, that's like a, a running back in football. Sees that little opening and off he went. Bowers saw the opening right down the gut and jammed it. 59-47. The Panther lead is 12 with 11-15 remaining. And the D.C. crowd is back into it here at Boston Garden. Charles Smith camping out at the top of the uh, key area. Now Gore gets around Bowers and steps out of bounds in the process. And the Panthers turn it over. D.C. now trying to crank up a run at pitch. Trailing by 12 at 11 4 And we'll have a stoppage of play for official purposes. The crowd enjoying things. They hope that D.C. can cut into this lead, which is now 12 points for pitch. Coyotes using the Donnelly directory again. It's a complete colorful yellow pages that's better and easier to use. Oh no! Ah, the Donnelly directory with street maps, white pages, and entertainment guides. It's a better yellow pages. Saved again. The Donnelly directory. It's the yellow pages and much, much more. There's the Big East Freshman of the Week, and it's Carlton Screen. And Plymouth fresh Freshman of the Week, Carlton did a fine job, the Providence uh, Freshman. Well, he makes Donovan and Delray Brooks even more effective, the, the Providence deep three-point shooters, because he penetrates and dishes off to him and gives Donovan a little rest. 12 points, five assists, three steals, and he was five for six. 
Carlton Stream, the Plymouth freshman of the week. The pass is leading by 12, but here comes BC with the ball. Soft 2 2 1 zone press by Pitt now. Remember, the Packers are already in the bonus. Pitt has committed only two team fouls, second half. Dana Barrows has not had a point in the second half. Had 10 in the first half, but had a 15 minute lull. Now we have another problem with the clock perhaps this time as Paul Evans gets the attention of official Peter Pavia. Now we have the conference at the scorer's table. Well, Clock was, reads 10 50 yeah, and then he's right the you because I remember you calling it Bill it was 11 4. That's correct. And I remember you saying 11 4 to go when we went to the to the televised timeout. Clock shows 10 58 now. Yeah, it's only 28 right. seconds on the uh, shooting clock so they've missed uh, 17 they've missed 13 seconds somewhere along the line that's correctable and I believe that's the explanation that Peter Pavi is delivering to Jim O'Brien if the shot clock has gone down 17 seconds and the game clock only six is that right that's right we have a problem game clock only four so the difference is 13 game then, no it was 11 4 11 4 or six you're right the difference is 11 seconds and that's one of those situations where if the if the coach who's got the lead doesn't bring it to the referee's attention you can be certain that the coach who's behind is not going to bring it to the referee's attention as you see Evans conferring with Pavia to remind you that the Plymouth player of the game will be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network as part of Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East basketball. Sorry, Dave. Now the whole thing about the televised uh, monitors whether replays could be used See, this is a thing where the referee could get assistance either from the television or from the play-by-play. -play. There's there's some guys over there that are typing play-by-play, -play, and they will have typed on their sheet 11:04 left in the half. Now you see the 45 second clock down to 28. The game clock's only moved six seconds. It's obvious that there's an adjustment, and they've made it. And the game clock now reached 10:47. You don't think these two teams know they're playing in Boston Garden, do you? Pitt is 8 of 11 in the second half of the floor, and D.C. is a better 10 for 12. That, those are NBA-type figures, and better. Well, that's because Larry Bird widens these rims out here, you know. <laughs> I mean, all the shots he makes here, by the time you come in to play, they're a little bigger than the heat has expanded them a little bit. I didn't see the game last night against uh, the Hawks here, but somebody told me he was uh, on another planet as he normally is. Well, I'll tell you, Bill, uh, chatting with our back before the game tonight, I mean, Red was talking about his work habits, but with all deference to all the great players I've seen in my life, I've been privileged to see Bird is the best I've ever seen. There's Barrows. Three pointers in the air. 10.38 remaining, and it's 59.50. DC down by nine. Three-pointer now starts to come into effect as you wind down to the 10-minute mark. And the crowd very much into it now. Smith comes way outside the handle. And Gore can't get him to go to Smith, so Gore pops it to the corner and gets it back. Pitt needs to be patient enough now to take it inside. Take care of the basketball and get it inside. Something they didn't show against St. John's, and that was patient. Smith missing off the front rim, and Jamie Benton's got the ball for B.C. Here come the Eagles at the 10-minute mark. Chance to go to 7 or 6, depending on where it comes from. Jamie Benton from three-point territory. Lane with the board. I think you know, Steve Benton wanted to go up with him, and then I said, no, maybe I better just get down and get my defensive position. That was a big-time rebound by Jerome Williams. Michael Gibson. And BC has the ball. Two players on it. Stevie Benton comes out with it, and the Panthers reach in and foul it. They call the foul on Demetrius Gore, and that's his third personal. You see Evans, he's not on the referees. He's coaching on the sideline. There's the replay. Big strong rebound by Bowers. Benton gets it, and there's Gore going after it. He had he's mixed up with some muscle there as well in the ball. Into the game is Rod Brooken, and he's not replacing an official. He's replacing Demetrius Gore. Who takes a seat on the Panther bench? BC down by nine, and it's getting interesting here at the nine minute and 30 second mark. Bauer with that hook shot almost got it. Tip no good. Steve Benton no good. And Smith, I think, intimidated and then got the ball, and here comes Pitt in the transition game. He intimidated the first one, he blocked the second. All right, if you're Pitt, you've got the lead. You stay ahead on offense. Be patient, try to get it inside, make sure you look for good shots. Not necessarily trying to take any time off the clock. Now that was nine minutes to go. 
But don't force it. Don't rush it. Work the basketball and make sure you get your shot. Rod Brooker hits nothing but the bottom of the net, and it's 61-50. Brooker has had some big field goals this year for the Panthers. And that was a good trip for, for Pitt, though, because it was a well-conceived play. It was a baseline screen, a set play, number four, that Evans called off the bench. And Barrows from three-point range. Sorry, Dave. Uh, he'll bury it. I mean, he'll absolutely bury it from that range, Bill. Dana Barrows. 61-52. They didn't give him three-pointer that time. I, I think it was one foot may have touched the line on the way back down. Smith in traffic. Whistle on the play and a foul by BC. Is it Scott or is it Bowers? It is Scott. And for Tyrone Scott, the 6'7 junior, his second personal foul. Let's take a look. Okay, here's, here's the reversal pass now. Goes into Smith popping up in the lane. I think they got Scott on O'Brien, by the way, is on the sideline. He's trying to get the three points on that last shot. But I don't think anybody gave a sign, Bill. This is a one and one for Charles Smith. He'll get the bonus. Panthers have that lead back to double digits at the, at the 8.21 mark. Charles Smith now with uh, 7 for 7 for 11 points. How about 8 for 8? BC makes a, a bench move, but uh, Skip Barry will have to wait before ending as the Panthers open that lead back up to 11 points here. Hit back in the 2-3 zone, but you'll see Goodson pointing on to Barrows. You'll always want to try to keep someone in contact with him. Bowers that gets the shot away quickly, but it's not a good one. Smith made him rush it. Smith. There's a lot with those long arms. That could have been a bad pass, and he saved it. I like the fact that he ran the court and then made a good catch. Curtis Aiken. And Smith is on a back. Charles Smith commits. Personal foul number two. Team foul in the second half of the Panthers, number four. And we'll have a stoppage of play as the Panthers have a 63-52, 11-point lead. Bill Hillgrove and Dave Gavitt here in Boston Garden. More Big East action. There are the banners. Something about the night When the stars come out to play The feeling is so right It's my favorite time of the day so give me the night, give me the night, give me a night sweet light. Oh, give me the night, give me the night, give me a night sweet light. Clear, refreshing, and bright. The choice that's always right. So give me the night, give me the night, give me a night sweet light. Imagine there is a magnificent estate where the owners enjoy an occasional ballet, or opera, a winter sleigh ride even some cool jazz on a warm summer night. This is Hartwood Acres. And the owners? They're the one and a half million residents of Allegheny County. Hartwood Acres is one great performance we all can enjoy. Pittsburgh National. We're a bank that believes in performance. You're taking a look at the Big East Dodge Player of the Week, and that's Mark Bryant of Seton Hall. 50 points, 21 rebounds in three games, including 22, seven rebounds, game-winning free throws, with four seconds left against Georgetown. Much improved player for P.J. Carlissimo's team, and it's something about the Pirates when they see those Hoya uniforms, their eyes light up. They have defeated Georgetown twice this year by 21 at the Capitol Center, and then uh, held on to win at the Meadowlands. 7.46, the clock turns down as Dana Barrows comes full court for the BC Golden Eagles. Until if BC scores here, we might look for a little full court pressure from them as the clock winds down. Good ball, man. Barry shot it well in the early stages of this half, and then committed his fourth foul and had to sit down, but now he's back and trying to add some spark here. Skip Barry missing. Brooklyn lost a rebound in the corner, and Saved it to Michael Goodson as James Benton hit the deck. I heard the bench that time warning Michael Goodson. Here comes pressure from the rear. Who was it? Uh, Satch who said, uh, Satchel Page, yeah. don't ever look over your shoulder because somebody may be gaining on you. In this game, you almost have to sense it. You have to almost count heads. If you only see four, you know you've got a problem from behind. Jerome Lane. And a good rebound for Troy Bowers. And here comes Barrows. A great house. 
three-pointers if he can. Anna Barros, 15 points in the game, has hit three three-pointers, and Jim O'Brien argued he had a fourth. I like the fact that Barros hasn't forced the ball. I mean, Pitt's done a great job of limiting him to fewer shots, but to Barros' credit, he's taken no bad shots. Barry behind the screen by Scott. 63-54. Nine-point lead for the Panthers. BC's problem, their offense has been pretty consistent this half, Bill, but they've been unable to stop Pitt at the defensive end. Barry has 12 all here in the second half. As BC cuts the Panther lead to nine at 6-14. Pitt is in the bonus. Pitt has only committed four fouls. One-handed pass by Lane. Smith. Charles Smith around. Troy Bowers. Good move by Smith that time. He didn't hurry it. He was more precise and went right up strong. 2-3 pit zone. And they're not coming out belly to belly with Bowers. Good block that time by Lane on Benton. And here comes Michael Goodson. Oh, it came behind Jerome Lane. It was one of those passes that had too much mustard. If it's not perfect, it's not going to be caught. No, that's exactly right. And Evans really not jumping all over anybody on that play because I think Goodson did an excellent job of reading it the right, the right pass, the right play was there. He just delivered it too, too hard. 5.42 remaining, an official timeout. The Panthers have an 11-point lead, but after the turnover, the Eagles have the basketball. Piedmont Airlines presents a phone number so valuable, you'll never forgive yourself if you don't write it down. This is the number that'll get you airfares so low, you'll find them hard to believe. This has got to be a pen, right? Hang on, we'll look. And you'll also get Piedmont service that's been rated among the best in the industry. So call Piedmont today. I got it. What could be simpler? Is this one of them Japanese imports? Hi, Coach Premier. Mitsubishi built Colt Premier. It's fun to drive. Oh, Commissioner! Has the boost of optional turbo. <laughs> it's luxurious. <laughs> and imported only for Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers. Colt. It's all the Japanese you need to know. Is that Japanese? It's Tokyo and Japan. Huh? Panthers lead by 11, but Boston College has the basketball. Late stages, second half. Pitt's been very, very efficient on offense this half. You'll see this replay coming up here. Good camera work. There's the pass to Charles Smith on the baseline. Little pump fake in low. Bowers makes a mistake of body and up, and Smith keeps his balance and goes up strong. Good, solid big man back to the basket move. Nice to see Charles catch a little spark because it's something that he really didn't have uh, in the St. John's game the other night. He was hesitating. He just didn't get into the flow, and he's very much into it here this evening. Very much into the defensive flow, I might add. He has been a, a real factor inside. A lot of blocks, but he's had a lot of influences and a lot of don't take them too, because here I am. Influences show up sometimes in the stats, but not always. He showed up with missed shots, but uh, they're really... Uh-oh. Barrow skipped it, but it was a short hop that Barry just couldn't even get to, let alone him. Uh, Pitt's done a good job defensively with the special defense on Dana Barrows, but in their 2-3 zone, they've really pointed on him very well. Come on! Early field goal percentages. BC, I might add, though, is two for their last seven. Oh, Offensive foul, Rod Brooklyn, and then knocked over Steve Benton. Did I say Steve Benton? I did mean Tyrone Scott. Well, you see it here. He's got position. Was there before the contact was made. Good call. Pete Pavia certainly didn't hesitate. Either was signal or vocal call. Did he? Panther lead is 11. You're exactly right. As the game clock comes down toward the five-minute clock. And they got Smith on a reach in. And Smith commits his third personal foul. Good offensive move by Troy Bowers. Got Smith a little bit behind the play. Yeah, just a, just a bit on the slide. Charles a little late coming across. That's only the sixth team on pit. So no shots involved. 5.02 remaining. D.C. down by 11. Dana Barros, I would imagine, will touch the ball quite a bit here. Go inside to Bowers. Blocked by Smith, and here comes Pitt two on one. Aiken. And Aiken is fouled by Barrows. And for Dana Barrows, that's only his second personal foul. Aiken will shoot two. Well, that, that was one heck of a block by Charles Smith because the move was not even a turnaround jump shot by Bowers. It was a half hook. 
and Smith was able to get his body off. Now there's the foul at the other end. Barris getting Aiken's arm as he goes to the basket. Aiken did a good job again that time. Speed gets you from one foul line to the other, Bill. When you get into the scoring zone, as Curtis makes the first, you've got to get it under control, and he did. Jim O'Brien wanted to hold the score into the 50s or 60s, but it's now at 66, and we still have 450 to go. That's Curtis Aiken's first foul shot of the night. He misses a second, but Brooken, how did he get in there? Brooken goes up strong again. Rod Brooken. He came in from the wing, and he just slid around under the blockout position. That's instinct. Uh, to be a good offensive rebounder, you've got to be moving when the ball left, and that's what Brooklyn did that time. Look at the zone. They almost they almost passed Barrows off one to the other. See him point at him? Mm -hmm. Okay, Aiken says, I got him now. They are communicating. That's Absolutely. good. Absolutely. They're matching up out front. Somebody's received. Now Curtis goes away. As the ball came to him, he slid away. Didn't pick up the ball. They're going to have somebody almost man-to-man -man all the time on Dana Barrows. Another block. Smith blocks Scott, but the ball is kicked out by Pitt. Charles Smith at 4.09 with another block. The fifth leading shot blocker in the country. The tops in the Big East. And again, he gets his body away from it, which is really critical. If you're going to be a good shot blocker, you can't body up. He took a little step back, got his body away, and then put a real nail on it twice in a row. Lane gets a piece of the inbounds pass, but BC holds on. Game clock at four minutes, shot clock at 38. Barrows from three-point land. Oh, my goodness. A home run, and it's 68-57. After lead is cut to 11, and Barrows now with 18 points. Well, that shows you the kind of havoc that Barrows can wreak upon you if you're not doing a good job of knowing where he is. And Pitt has done a good job, generally. Now BC man-to-man, -man, and they'll start putting the, the pressure on them in the last three and a half. Smith around Scott. Somebody pushed Charles Smith, and I believe it might be Scott. Let's see what John Letcher decides. It is. Tyrone Scott with the foul. That will be Scott's third. Charles Smith at the 330 mark will step to the line. See Jim O'Brien. He has done an excellent job of maximizing the potential of this basketball team. He, he prepares very well, has excellent game plans, varies his defense. Tonight, I think his team did a good job, and they were just weren't, weren't able to handle Finn inside. And the new uh, sports center on Chestnut Hill hopefully will be ready uh, in, uh, in the fall. That'll be a big recruiting boost to Boston College. Clearly, I think that Robert Center, with all due respect to that antiquated facility, they got a lot of my blood back in the 70s when we used to play there, uh, does not really do a lot to turn basketball players on the to come to BC. All right, if BC is going to make a run, it's going to have to start right now. 3:30 and 13-point line. Smith has recollections of his freshman year. He's 10 for 10 from the line. Jamie Benton missing. And look at Lane climb up there. Look at that palming of the ball. How many people can do that? That's amazing. Just grab the basketball, hold it in one hand. How many college players? Not many. I don't think many college players have moved. Nice move by Smith. What a move. Charles is on his game. The confidence is back. You can see it. That's the first time he's seen straight man in about a month, too. <laughs> so he was happy to have a little room to maneuver. Charles Smith in the basketball game, 18 points. Four field goals, 10 of 10 foul shots with the 250 mark. Pitt has that lead back up to 15 points. Oh, and Smith is a factor again, but Aiken reached in on the way in. Got it on the way up. There'll be no goaltend. It'll send Benton to the line for, for two shots. This is three-point time for BC. And I believe personally that this is the place that you'll see that black line, not very well, but there it is. And this is the time that the three-pointer should be employed. I think this line is too short, and, and it isn't enough at risk, and you're seeing too many three-pointers taken. It's not helping the game. I think the three-pointer is good. The kids like it. The fans like it. Keep it in the game. But put the line back enough to the point where there's some risk involved, and you won't get the game out of balance with an excessive number of three-point field goals being attempted. I agree with you 100%. I think the line ought to come back, and I enjoy the three-point play. I wasn't sure beforehand if it, were, it was going to be good, but it's too close right now. It's a normal shot for too many players. I've got a three-point study that we've been doing on all Big East games played to date here, which we have time. I'll tell you about later. It's amazing. I think it backs up the point that they're just, it's out of balance. Over. Coaches will adjust to the last few minutes of the ball. Game. Yeah, that's, that's where the pros use it. That's really where it should be. Charles Smith got caught leaning the wrong way after Jerome Lane released the ball, and he tried to get there, but uh, it's an ill-timed turnover at 229. The pit has a 
13 point lead and unless Barrows can shoot lights out from three point range the Panthers have a big ally in that ancient clock here at venerable Boston Garden. Evans is thinking the same way he's going back to the one three zone and the chaser. Yep. Barrows working hard keeps it alive for Scott. Scott guarded closely gets it to Kelly and now the loose ball and here comes Curtis Aiken the senior from Buffalo. And the Panthers lead it at the two minute mark 74 59. Curtis now into double figures with 11 points. Barrows from downtown. Uh oh he's, he's down and somebody got his pins. Michael Goodson knocked him out his, his pins out from under him. And gets called, and properly so, for the foul by trail official Peter Pavia. Yeah, not deliberate. BC that time set up a screen on the right side with Ted Kelly. As you see Goodson go over and slap Dana on the, on the hand, make sure he's okay. And Barrows did a good job. He, he, he bumped up Mike on the screen, and then after the shot, Mike bumped into him. 153 remaining. The Panthers lead 74-59. Dana Barrows going to the line. Would you believe for the first time in this game? Well, that's a credit to Pitt's defense. I mean, they've really done a good job of keeping the ball out of Dana's hands. And uh, uh, the offer's not held in this building. Everything else is in Boston. But the fat lady's warming the vocal cords up. <laughs> 153 and the lead at 13. And here comes BC pressure. Maybe Paul Evans can borrow a cigar from the Redhead. Red would trade him one. He'd trade the cigar for a couple of Paul's talented pupils, David Robinson and Charles Smith. I'm sure Paul will be the first to admit he's uh, been very fortunate uh, to have been able to coach players of that caliber. Well, he's done a good job coaching him, too. That's, the players have been fortunate to play for him, in my opinion. It's a two-way street. A minute 30 left. It's a red, it's red it out. Showing he's, patience, too. And that's, that's, that's something that wasn't there, especially for the second half of the St. John's game yeah. Monday night. And it's something that they will need on Monday night when they venture to that that den up in Syracuse called the Carrier Dome. Well, you'll find that the that the fans at Syracuse, all 30,000 plus of them, tend to cheer more and louder when the Orange have the ball and are dunking and doing their thing. You can get them out of it a little bit if you if you keep Syracuse on defense for long periods of time. Curtis Aiken, good form at the line to keep that Panther lead well into double figures. Pit by 14, and Aiken now has 12 points, two for three at the line tonight. Pitt has only missed three foul shots all evening, and that's been a plus for Paul Evans. Second is good. I'd say a very pleased Pitt coaching staff over there, and also some key administrators, Dr. Ed Bozick, Dean Billick, and Bob Heddleston down in the end zone. Steal by Aiken and a foul from behind by Stevie Benton, and so Aiken will shoot the one and one. At 1.15, Pitt leading by 15. Hey, there's a second half score, and uh, they're playing uh, grind out tight basketball. Providence leading Connecticut 46 42. Tight one at the Hartford Civic Center tonight. That's a, a very big ball game for Providence, as, as this was a big game for Pitt to go on the road and try to grab one. Boston College calls a timeout. They have one remaining, and they trail with a minute 15 by 15. I'm Jimmy Connors, and it's about time you met my partner, my financial side. All successful people and companies have a financial side. Let's go, partner. But to really be a winning team, you might need some help. We need some help. You need Payne Weber behind you for financial expertise, sound advice. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Payne Weber. You're awfully stiff. You've got to loosen up a little bit. Airlines makes 50 departures from where it's winter to where it's summer. And with our low Florida fares, the leap to summer is easier than you think. First year coach Jim O'Brien and his Boston College Eagles who trail by 15 with very little time remaining here at Boston Garden. 
Panthers coming in uh, badly needing to getting to get off that uh, break even point of two and two in the Big East and Boston College one and four so far but playing everybody tough. They took a run at the Panthers here in the second half but then Pitt started to uh, just kind of answer back with the baskets and play patient baskets. Uh, I think Jim O'Brien would be quick to tell you even before the game that Pitt is a tough team for BC to match up against the size factor inside it hurts BC in an area they're not strong for Pitt Bill anytime you can go on the, the road and conference play and grab a win it's a big plus and so this is a big win for them tonight. on the miss Kelly had it and the Panthers Aiken reached in trying to steal it away the Pitt with their biggest margin 16 points that will not make Curtis Aiken on the top of Paul Evans Christmas card list because he doesn't want the clock stopped and he sure doesn't want to put BC at the line but that's an instinctive play Curtis made a good basketball play as he slid inside and tried to knock it away you take a good look at Curtis there and really is one of the nicest young men I know I don't know about you but I've never met a kid that's any a nicer nicer kid than that. on the plane flight to Hawaii from uh, Provo Utah on the miss by Kelly Lane with another rebound and here come the Packers in transition Curtis Aiken uh, was very visible on the 747 going over the Pacific Pond, uh, going around talking to anybody who cared to talk. He just uh, engaged in conversation and has that willing smile and that ability to communicate with people. I noticed tonight before the game, Aiken and Dana Barrows out here visiting on the court. Curtis from uh, Bennett High School in Buffalo, New York. Same high school that produced Bob Lanier. Picked by Kelly, shot by Barrows. Rebound lane, 56 seconds remaining. Smith over the top, and Goodson now ahead to Rod Brooken. Here comes Lane. Jerome Lane. That was a classic transition, wasn't it? That's how you practice it. Whoops! You don't practice that. That's called a ghost pass. Well, Barrows was looking for, for Benton on the three-point play, but Jamie was heading to the other corner. 40 seconds remaining, and a backcourt foul by Steve Benton, and Goodson will toe the line to shoot the one and one. I don't think so. I think he called an offensive he foul. He did. He did. You're right. On Mike for warding off. If I if I saw the interpreter the sign correctly, he did. He certainly did. Mike Goodson, his third personal foul. His fourth. I beg your pardon. BC at 38 seconds. Tyrone Scott doesn't get it to go, but I believe the foul may belong to Charles. Pump fake got Charles up in the air, and then Scott did a good job riding up through afterwards. But I think it'll be that's his fourth. A little late for the Eagles. A good solid uh, effort by Pitt tonight. Good game plan by Evans. The one-three defense and the chase have certainly uh, helped their cause. They got a great game out of Charles Smith. Panthers did it with eight players. Yeah. Pat Kavanaugh was the eighth player. And right now. Rod Brooken seeing some action. Yeah, in fact, uh, he's seen uh, a lot of action of late. A few smiles on that pit bench while action's still going on. That's a luxury. You don't, you don't often get to do that. You know? Two of their Big East wins so far of three on the road. Here comes Lane, and Barrows fouls him on the way. At 30 seconds, pit leading by 18 points. You saw, I mentioned the pit administrators on the road of the basketball team before. So we look at them under the basket there, Dr. Red Rose. Keep an eye on Billick and Heddleston. Make sure they didn't referee down here in the corner. I did read the paper where uh, Paul Evans was trying to contact the commissioner of the Big East. I don't know whether the phone call ever got through or not. I told him to call Art Highland, the supervisor of officials. Is it called delegating responsibility? You got it. 30 seconds left. Panthers by 18. Aiken gets a seat. Smith gets a seat on the Panther bench, and so does Goodson. Into the game, Steve Maslick, the 6'9 oh, sophomore, or actually a redshirt freshman from Freedom. Pat Cavanaugh re enters. There's Charles Smith. And Scott Colombo, a walk on from Altoona at 5'8, is in the Panther lineup. And now BC clears the bench. Coming in is Charlie Michael, a 5'9 senior from Chelmsford, Massachusetts. There's another new player coming into the lineup there. That is number 50, John Heath, a 6'10 sophomore from Nacogdoches, Texas, a junior college transfer from McLennan College in Texas. And there's John Rask, who punted for the Panther football team this year. And number 54, Cole and Gary Cohen for BC. Now, I, I don't uh, claim any responsibility for the officials. I had enough trouble getting along with them when I was coaching without trying to deal directly with them now. Bottom line is, though, that uh, in a league situation, you have to have people familiar with the players in order to establish consistency. Now, the bottom line is you, you go out and you try to get the best coaches that you can get, I mean, the best officials that you can get. 
coaches have some input. Once you sign them, uh, the supervisor works with them, and the coaches stay out of it. That's, that's the way we try to operate it. All new people in for Boston College. Kelly Monroe, number 23, around West. Gets an open baseline jumper. Big scrap of the rebound, and the seven-footer puts it back, but is foul on the play. The seven-footer is Gary Cole, a sophomore from Brighton, England, and that's Rich Kerrigan on the foul. He's from Las Vegas, Nevada. There's a goodly amount of miles between those two hometowns, isn't there? Absolutely. I've never made that trip to Las Vegas, Nevada. 12 seconds left in the game, pit by 19. You ever, been to, you ever been to Brighton, England? No, I've never been to Brighton, England. And there's a banking foul shot by they, Gary Cole. Yeah, that's how they shoot the free throws in Brighton. They bank them. Look on the rebound. Steve Maslick had some good, meaningful minutes against Seton Hall. And against Chicago State, turned it loose for 11 points. Colombo missing. He's 0 for 5 on the season from the floor. What a nice kid he is. Walk on from Altoona. One second on the clock. Nice thing was that when he took that shot, the whole pit bench started up. They wanted it to go in for him. Charlie Michael from midcourt. And the buzzer sounds. Ending this basketball game. Pitt has defeated Boston College. 80 to 62. The Panthers now. Big East play three and two, 14 and four overall. Boston College drops dead even at eight and eight, and one and five in Big East play. Bill Hillgrove and Dave Gavitt back to wrap it up here at Boston Garden right after this. By tomorrow morning, seven to nine inches. What's it gonna be? Snow or no snow? School or no school? Hey, gentlemen, seven to nine inches by morning. School, hello. Joe's dead. Ready for the pitcher? Yep. Got the pitchfork? Nope. Got a shovel. How come? Gonna snow. Says who? Joe's dead in wood. Music has the power to reach deeply into the world of its listeners. At the Western Pennsylvania School for Blind Children, the love of music was instilled in students from its earliest days of operation. Today, music continues to play a powerful role in the students' lives as therapy for some, training for others, evoking visions of brightness in the mind's eye of the blind child. Building upon a century of achievement at the Western Pennsylvania School for Blind Children. You're looking at the Plymouth player of the game here in this battle between the Panthers and Boston College. Charles Smith, 18 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 block shots. I think he might have driven the bus on the way over from the hotel. He really had an outstanding game tonight. And I, I was impressed with the fact that he passed the ball very well in the post in the first half, Bill, and also that he was very patient. Yes, and I, I think uh, that can be contagious. When well, your key player is impatient, as he showed to be uh, against St. John's, I think the Panthers kind of took their cue and said, well, wait a minute, the wind's out of the sails. Our big guy's not, you know, he's not fluid. And uh, his nickname is Mr. Fluid, and he was certainly that here this evening. Well, and you can tend to be impatient when every time you catch the ball, you're drawing a crowd of three people. But tonight he was very patient, and he, and he certainly set the tone for a fine pit win on the road. Enjoyed working with you, Dave, and thanks very much for the comments. Enjoyed working with our statistician, Al Gottman. This is Bill Hillgrove at Boston Garden. The Panthers have defeated Boston College Golden Eagles 80 to 62.